Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter six talking about test tools and automation and moving into the next segment of it that is 6.3 tool life cycle. As a part of this tutorial we will be actually exploring that what kind of life cycle does a tool has within an organization. Of course it's not always a fixed thing that what you created today you will be making use of it down the line after 20 years as well or probably even after the 10 year cycle. So there are chances that when the tool gets updated right from the vendor side or sometime the technology has grown up so much that your tool is no longer supporting those activities and that's where the need of retiring the tool comes into picture. So the moment when you talk about acquiring a tool from a market or probably creating someone something of your own and the same thing happens on the other side that is at some point of time you have to retire that tool there must be a life cycle which determines when you start creating a tool or selecting a tool from the market and when you actually retire the tool from your organization. But what exactly is the life cycle that's what we will be covering as a part of this particular tutorial because you need to understand what happens in between the acquisition and the retirement of the tool which you are using. So it is basically broken into four different segments or four different phases of the entire tool life cycle. Number one is acquisition. Number two is support and maintenance. Number three is evolution. And number four is retirement. So let's get started with the very first phase here that is acquisition. So that first phase will tell you that how exactly you're going to acquire a tool and what kind of steps will be involved. So there are four different stages in a tool's useful life cycle that a test manager must manage. What are they? Number one is acquisition. The tool must be acquired as we have already discussed in our first of the syllabus like you know we talk about the tool selection process considering all the factors and after that you conduct a POC which is just to check that how well your uh, requirements are met by the tool and whether we should adopt it or not. If everything goes well you go with the acquisition of the tool and that's where the acquisition stage starts where you pay for the tool or you actually custom built your tool within the organization. After the decision to bring in the tool has been made, the test manager should assign someone, basically the test analyst or technical test analyst, to be the administrator of the tool. Now what is an administrator? Administrator is someone like ownership of the tool, who knows the tool in and out, or probably has to learn about that, and will be controlling everything what happens by using the tool. For example, if I talk about an instance like Jira, Jira has an administrator who designs or you know take care of the permissions what people will have, who will have access to what product of Atlassian or different variants of Jira, what kind of access they will have within Jira, what kind of permissions they will have, what kind of roles they will have, who all like user account creation or workflows, you know types of issues, there are so many things right. So customization is completely taken care of by the administrator. So the moment you adopt a tool there must be a clear ownership of the tool that this person is responsible for taking care of this tool in terms of managing it, administrating it or taking care of any sort of updates or upgrades related to that. Now the person should make decisions as how and when the tool will be used, where created artifacts will be stored, naming conventions etc to be followed throughout the tool. Making these decisions upfront rather than allowing them to occur in an ad hoc manner can make a significant difference in the eventual ROI of the tool. That means we just don't let everyone decide their own way of using it. So we basically create some standard guidelines which entire organization will follow. Be it the naming conventions, the way you import the data, the way you export the reports, how do you manage the assets which are generated by the tool and lot many other things if you do a deeper dive. You can actually find out more about this in the test automation engineer certification. Now this will help you to return good investments or like return on investment to be positive in terms of following some standard guidelines for everyone to make use of it. Now training is likely needed to be supplied to the users of the tool in order to have a great outcome and of course as when you talk about the acquisition with acquisition comes training and ramping up your team members to get to know what exactly the tool is all about. Without you telling them how to make use of the tool 
what are the features of this what are the options of it what this tool will basically help us with you cannot get a particular outcome the second stage here is support and maintenance ongoing process for support and maintenance of the tool will be required which is from the term of any kind of patches which are released any kind of updates which are required hot fixes releases and lot many upgrades which happen on the tool so it's a continuous process right from the moment you acquire a tool you go with the support and maintenance throughout the life cycle of the tool within your organization and you need to keep an eye that whether this update is worthwhile for you or not because not every update is important for you so if that update is really required for you maybe enabling you something to do especially you can go for that or else just stay to your particular version which you are making use of maybe you can wait for some more releases to happen to finally upgrade your product and make use of it the responsibility for maintaining the tool may go to the administrator of the tool of course because all these updates and upgrades are taken care by the administrator on the back end or it might be assigned to a dedicated tools group so if your organization is quite big you may have a dedicated team who takes care of all the tool management and they will take care of all your maintenance part if the tool is to work with the other tools that's interoperability we discussed that in the previous chapter then data interchange and process for cooperation should be considered decisions on backup and restore of the tool and its output need to be considered now support and maintenance also includes that if in case your update fails then what happens to the existing data so that's where the support and maintenance team or this particular life cycle should also consider backing up your data every time you make a new change or update or upgrade to your application or the tool so backing up and restoring the information back to the instance will be taken care by this particular team or phase as well further to talk about the next phase here is evolution where evolution basically means that from time to time changing as per the trend for example I bought a particular version of a tool like 1.0 and then I thought like there are new things happening like java has changed or technology has been improved there are new tools coming there are integration with several components which was not possible earlier so you upgrade to 2.0 now that supports it so I mean similarly now like down the line 2 years again you got some new technology being integrated so you take up 3.0 so evolution means that if in case you are taking up of any particular tool then you have to upgrade the tool interface according to that or the architecture so upgrade and upgrade are somewhere related to that but evolution means transforming the tool to meet the latest expectations so here uh, as the time goes on the environment business needs or the vendor issues may require that major changes to the tools or its use be made now for example the tool vendor when require update to a tool which causes issues with cooperating tools now what is that from the point of interoperability that means from i have two tools which are exchanging data between them and one of them is updated but the second one is not updated now that could be a challenge sometime that no longer interaction is possible so i also release a particular add in or plug in to enable a uh, data exchange between two different variants or versions of these two tools so that is where cooperating tools will be important a necessary change to the environment for business reasons may cause problem with the tool that means uh, you are using a tool and suddenly microsoft says that we came up with windows 8 so now it's time you can switch from 7 to 8 with lot of cool features but your tool which you're using is no longer compatible with windows 8 because you didn't know what exactly windows 8 will be so now your existing tool cannot be utilized or probably you need to evolve evolve yourself or evolve your tool to meet the expectations of windows 8 so that you can upgrade your organization microsoft versions to 7 to 8 so that's where we are talking about this the more complex the operating environment for a tool is the more evolutionary changes may disrupt its use So right now, if you see that the frequency of operating systems, what you have got, and uh, most of the tools are not so compatible with Windows 10, and that's the reason we are talking about it. At this point, depending on the role the tool plays in the testing, a test manager may need to ensure that the organization has a way to ensure continuity of the service. That means anyhow, this tool should be continued to use. Either you plan for the upgrade or you don't plan for the upgrade you just make sure that this tool moves into the new environment and you make use of it because you just can't stop using that because a lot of dependency exists on that now 
Last but not the least, of course, the stage four, which is the retirement. The time will come when the tool has uh, outlasted its useful lifetime. That means there's nothing more remaining to be done in that. So just like Windows again, the Windows 10 has officially retired, saying that we cannot do anything beyond this. We tried as much as possible to make it from a very initial version to Windows 10. And now I don't think uh, we can actually make anything good or make any additional features in that. So we finally retired Windows 10. So Windows 10 is the last version of your Microsoft Windows. So here, this is the time will come when the tool has outlasted its useful time lifetime. At this point, the tool will need to be retired gracefully. The functionality supplied by the tool will need to be replaced and data will need to be preserved and archived. Because once you retire a tool, it's just not that you delete it or you just don't press shift delete and permanently erase it. No, there are a lot of things which you're managing there. There are hundreds of scripts, or thousands of you know, automation uh, scripts there and millions of data which you were using or connectivity between different sources. So you just can't remove it even if you're retiring it. So you go for migration. You migrate from one particular platform to another platform or one tool to another tool or probably if you're making a new version of it or probably taking up a new software altogether, then you should know how to move all the data from there to the other side. So generally you should look forward to the migration possibilities and to what extent you can actually migrate from one particular tool to another tool. That's very important. So here, uh, this uh, need to be taken into account that the data will need to be preserved and archived. This can occur because the tool is at the end of the life cycle or simply because it has reached the point where the benefits and opportunities of the conversion to a new tool exceeds the cost and the risk. So I think that was quite clear to understand the overall tool life cycle that what exactly is the journey of the tool when we make use of it. It's just not that simple you start using today and tomorrow you leave using it. No, there are a lot of things which you did in between these two days, like preparing data, preparing script, maintaining all your activities, and you just can't shift delete that. So there is a life cycle and a manager must be taking care of that. Well, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.